calling it part one because this is going to be a little bit of a multi-video project. I'm learning my way, feeling my way as I go with brand new skills here. As you can see, this is the original Scrambler Mudguard, but we've taken the 19-inch wheel off long ago, put the 17-inch wheel on, and it leaves big fat gaps like that, which simply won't do front and rear. So I'm going to change this mudguard for something that's a little bit more fitting in aluminium, and later on I can deal with how we're going to decorate it in the future, but I want to actually make it first. The second challenge in that, not only is making the mudguard itself, is making it safe. I'm using 18 gauge aluminium, which is one millimeter thick, and it doesn't matter how often or how much you sand that lip edge, it's still gonna be a razor blade. That is only one millimeter thick, and it will cut you and cut you and cut you every time you clean the bike. You cannot have that, it's got to be safe. So what I'm gonna do is put a rolled bead edge, hopefully, on the whole thing. Fold the edge of it over, a nice, a nice thick edge with some three mil wire inside that rolled bead. So that's another little task, another skill set I've seen other people do, and I've got to couple that once it's been done with then still being able to hammer it into shape and roll it and maintain that lip edge. So there's quite a lot of skills involved there, and I'm hoping I can master them at least halfway. Now once I've made the mud guard, the next part is the bracket. The bracket on this particular bike, the Scrambler, these lugs here that they bolt onto, they're mounted very high for the original tall front wheel. So because of that, I've got to make a bracket that's effectively upside down. It's got to go down, mount to those, then drop down a bit further to go over the tire and then the other side and come back up again. That's purely because of where these are cast into the forks and the bracket itself has got to be thick and beef because it's also a fork brace. The bracket on it from the factory is three mil thick and it's steel. So I can't just have a piece of aluminium going across there, it won't work, the forks will go floppy on the road, it won't feel right, and it'll probably crack the mudguard long term. So that's got to have a beefy, solid, chunky bracket with the mudguard like this one, just bolted to it. They just use a plastic one on the scrambler from scratch. So hopefully there is the project. Make the mudguard, make the bracket. Before I start either of those things, I've got to make the skills and start them flowing at least. So a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So step one, let's get the hammers, the sheet metal, and start beating the shape out. Let's get on with it. Right. Incidentally, the metal I ordered didn't turn up, so this is the side of a coach. <laughs> Believe it or not, all coaches are made from 18 gauge aluminium. Well, the body, the side of the bodies are, and the guys at work, where I work, they, they, when they damage, or when the body guys repair a coach, they take the damaged sheets out and they keep them for cut up and off cuts. So I managed to liberate one of those, thanks guys. panel 18 gauge aluminium now normally if it's thicker aluminium you might anneal that heat it up and then cool it so it goes all soft but honestly look <laughs> it doesn't need annealing it's too thin
Right, okay, got the shape so far. That's it. It's kind of mudguard shaped. It's longer than it needs to be, probably by about three inches each end. That's to give me room to fold it over and make the lip. And obviously it's way wider each side, but that's partly to give me something to grab hold of as I roll it. Uh, you see the normal mudguard, the one that's there is probably only that wide. So I'll be cutting probably that much off. So I've done half as width again. I measured the width six inches across and I've gone nine, overall nine and a half inches across in all. So it gives me plenty to grab hold of as I'm wheeling. Talking of which, let's do it. what I'm going to do is run along there with the snips and take a wedge of this off because as I'm trying to rotate that in the wheel to get round to these sides to put a nice radius on it all this puckered stuff which I, is coming off anyway is getting in the way and it's dragging on the wheel so let's just snip the sides off just by about an inch just to give me more clearance Clarence As you learn this, as you practice and you get the skills and you start to feel the metal, one of the things that is constantly on your mind is trapping your thumbs under that wheel and to avoid that is steering. So learning how to steer the metal so, you, so it goes where you want it to go is kind of the most unexpectedly challenging thing and kind of the most fun. Worth out to the bike. Right, so it's straightened out a little bit. That's interesting. I think what I need to do is put a flatter anvil in. I've got quite a curved anvil in, which is why when I offer it up, it's pulled in too much that way. So I think a little bit more work with a flatter anvil and hopefully push down front and rear instead of pushing down on the sides so hopefully it should help to curve it that way more and bring it into the correct lips for this tire which is quite a lot off at the moment okay makes sense right so that's the second most curved anvil which is probably why it's curling too much so to the middle one. I read in Eddie Paul's book that if you've got the ellipse you want and you don't want it any more elliptical but you want to curve more that way then pick an anvil that's the same curve as what you've got like that one and it shouldn't curve it anymore but he says don't pick an anvil that's flatter in order to try and flatten it out because what you'll get, if you can see it, you'll get two creases where the corners of the anvil are trying to flatten it out, but they'll just put lines and creases in it. So if you want to flatten it out, physically pull it as you roll, but if you want to curl it round, then pull it down as you go. It's all about motor skills.
more like it. Get in there now. Yeah, let's offer that up. Steamed up. there now so it's just more of the same just time and patience got the ellipse that way and curved that way and no creases now obviously wheeling it quite hard to get the shape to put lines in it everywhere so I'm going to wheel it gently for about half an hour and just polish all those little marks out all the ridges you can feel to try and get it smooth I'm going to trim the sides down quite a bit leave a little 10 mil lip and that'll give me a fold over lip at the edge which is another thing I want to practice because it's essential with this mud guard Good so far. got it to the exact size of the wheel that I need as a blank. If you go to the chopper shops, uh, if you're building a chopper or something, very often what you do is you buy a blank, which is just a blank fender, often right the way around, and you just chop it where you need it, usually for the back or the front, and that now is very much an aluminium mudguard blank. Love it. So now it's going to get a sharpie, mark where I want to cut it, come an extra 10 mil, and that'll give me the fold over. Awesome.
this is a very slow and very progressive process but enormously rewarding that's incredible well for me anyway the curvature on there has relaxed since I've trimmed that out probably about five mil that's not the end of the world okay now comes the bit which is really important this is now ready to fit to the bike or ready to make a bracket and it's not going to happen it's not going to be turned into a mudguard this is a test piece a practice piece when I'm finished with this it will go up on top of the unit there and it will sit there forever till I find a use for it in the future or one of my mates needs it or something but for now this is a test piece to get skills together with I'll do it again with another flat piece of metal and there are several things I would do differently thus is the process of learning right now the very important thing now is to put this lip edge on it now I have to thank Mad Geordie for this. Uh, if you've ever followed his channel, he's kind of gone dormant these days. He hasn't done a video for about a year. Mad Geordie is a guy in New Zealand who builds crazy trucks out of minis. You know, Austin minis and various other things. I think he's done a lawnmower with five engines. He's just a lunatic. But one of the things he did six years ago was how to roll a bead on the edge of a piece of shaped sheet metal using a hammer and some wire and some snips. So I'm going to try that now. I saved that little video, I had a look at it last night, and I'm hopefully going to be able to pull it off. So, here goes Julie, you can have a laugh at this. Right, you see the general idea, a piece of wire. This is just uh, eighth or three mil mild steel wire. You can use stainless if you prefer, but this is what I got. And the practice piece.
first attempt. So you see what it looks like on the bike, because that's what matters. Right, got the angles right, correct curve, correct ellipse. day of skills learned, a long day as well. It is a time consuming process, but it's extremely satisfying. I've absolutely enjoyed today. That's been amazing. And a half decent result, for a first attempt anyway. Not good enough for the bike though. Right, there we are, one practice piece. I can do no more, that is it for today. I can do no more because it's 5 p.m. and that's taken me seven hours. Now, obviously, I know the metal workers are laughing because that's an hour's work for a professional, but hey, I'm not professional. I'm just doing this as a first time ever. That is my first attempt on an English wheel. Never done it before, and I'm quite proud of that. Three things I'm proud of. I've got that angle correct, I've got that angle correct, and I've got most of the dents out. And with some more time, even more time, I would have eventually got that ripple smooth and polished it, and I could have mirror polished the finish and put it on the bike. But the other reason I won't put it on the bike is that these lumps and bumps around the back, I haven't folded that in as well as I could have done. That's a new skill as well, never done that either. So I'll be practicing that and in the next piece, I'm gonna do this again in the next video and hopefully I'll do it better than that. That'll go up the top there as a souvenir to my first ever piece of English wheel manufacture. I'm really, really pleased with that. Even though it's a first attempt and it's racked with mistakes, I'm proud of it and as you should be because then you're inspired for the next one, aren't you? That's it, I look forward to doing it in brass someday on the big high booster project, but for now this is a bit of aluminium for the front of the Triumph, and I'll make a proper one in the next video to bolt on the bike. A couple of quick thank yous, I want to say thanks if I can to the late Eddie Paul. Now, I mentioned him in the last video, just in the credits there. Eddie Paul was a legendary car customizer. He worked for the movie studios in Hollywood, making cars for movies. I think he made the cars for the film Grease in the 70s. He made those awesome Mercury lead sleds for the film Cobra and there were obviously plenty of them because they smashed them up in the film but there's one still in existence probably the best movie car of all time in my opinion a 50 Mercury lead sled awesome and of course he was involved in doing some of the cars as late as the Fast and Furious franchise uh, all sorts of stuff the guy's just a legend of the car industry and he didn't just make the cars and take the paycheck what he did also was share the skills he did videos DVDs and books on how to do metal working like this back in the 70s, long before the internet was invented and Eddie was the guy that I used to watch and I used to take the inspiration from to want to do this kind of thing. And here I am, later in life, doing it for myself for the first time. So thanks Eddie for your legacy, I really appreciate it sir. And thanks to all of you for watching, thank you to the patron team for helping make this possible. Take it easy, ride safe, I'll see you for the next one to make another one of these properly next time. I'll see you next time. To the night Won't you come and hold my hand Master of the sun Master of the sun